Thank you for coming here. This is, I believe, the first uh, ever social media brief that we've done here in government. And it's important for me to recognize that social media is an important tool for everyone here in Bermuda to get the message out. And why we're here today is to talk about Hurricane Nicole. Uh, the Emergency Measures Organization just concluded its meeting and we wanted to convey some important messages to the public. So I'd like to thank you for coming and for your assistance. Nicole is forecast to be a Category 2 hurricane, and Bermuda is currently under hurricane warning. Current Bermuda Weather Service reports have Hurricane Nicole's closest point of approach to Bermuda at 25 nautical miles at 11 a.m. on Thursday morning. As, as Nicole approaches, we can expect deteriorating conditions, including increased surf, increased winds, showers, and thunderstorms. And as I noted yesterday, we cannot be complacent with this storm. By now, your preparation should be nearing completion. It is imperative that residents follow the public safety and weather advisories issued by the EMO. And before I get into the main details, I wanna make a special plea to everyone. That if you have any residents uh, nearby, any seniors, any vulnerable people that live near you, in your family, as friends, please reach out to them now. Reach out to them during the storm if it's safe to do so, and particularly after the storm. It's important that we take care of each other. So with that, based on the EMO's meeting, here are some key points uh, for everyone to know. After careful assessment of the weather conditions, a decision has been made to close the causeway tomorrow at 11 p.m. And that's 11 p.m. tomorrow, the causeway will be closed. Those of you who obviously need to cross the causeway need to do so well before that time. Uh, the causeway will be closed for roughly uh, 12 to 18 hours, but a continual assessment will be made uh, throughout the storm activity. Government schools will close tomorrow at 12 p.m. and remain closed on Thursday and remain closed on Friday. We're urging parents to make the proper arrangements for all of your children in advance of the storm. Government offices will close early tomorrow at 3 p.m. and will remain closed on Thursday. Uh, the Chamber of Commerce has advised EMO that all businesses will be mindful of the weather forecasts and in light of our decision in government to close schools at noon on Wednesday, they are recommending that businesses close at 3 p.m. tomorrow at the latest to give staff the opportunity to make their personal arrangements as well. Again, out of an abundance of caution, the EMO is strongly advising residents and motorists to stay off the roads as of 10 p.m. tomorrow night until the all clear has been given by the emergency agencies. Following the passage of the hurricane, the EMO is asking that people stay off the roads in order for the emergency personnel to conduct their assessment duties safely, like clearing the streets, assessing which roads are passable, uh, and so on. There will be flight cancellations, so members of the public traveling are encouraged to contact airlines for any updates. The Elf Wade International Airport will assess the facility and will make a decision on closure tomorrow. As it relates to public transportation, there will be no ferry service tomorrow. The last bus will run at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. The Royal Bermuda Regiment will deploy personnel around Bermuda starting tomorrow evening. The government shelter at Cedar Bridge Academy will be open as of tomorrow at 4 p.m. The Lamb Fogo Urgent Care Facility will remain open through the duration of the storm. It will not close. The emergency broadcast station, which is 100.1 FM, will be on the air from tomorrow at 10 p.m. until and we'll provide updates on, on the hour and on the half hour to everyone listening in. I really want to encourage folks to tune in to 100.1 FM. Again, uh, power, electricity permitting, uh, we're also going to be updating and providing updates on weather.bm, uh, gov.bm, or via the EMO Facebook and Twitter platforms. My Twitter page is at Senator Barron. So people can follow me and I will continue to uh, put out as much updates as we possibly can. And again, finally, I want to stress it's so important that as residents, we take the necessary precautions for Hurricane Nicole. Please stay indoors during the storm. 
uh, and especially we don't want to see kite surfing and swimming on the South Shore beaches. The conditions are just too dangerous and we cannot risk the safety of emergency personnel. I'd like again thank you uh, for uh, coming today and being a part of uh, the first of many, we hope, uh, social media uh, briefings and I'd happily take any questions regarding uh, the storm activities and the emergency measures organization. I have a question. Sure, yes, go. It was actually something that was put to me by somebody that knew I was coming. The EMO Facebook page mm -hmm. is linked to the EMO Twitter account. Is it possible that you can post on them separately? Power granted, because sometimes one platform will work better than others. Thank you for that. Um, that's uh, I will I will certainly speak to yeah. uh, the subject matter experts on that one because it's a good point. Um, again, for those who didn't hear the question, it was regarding the EMO Facebook page and Twitter accounts to be able to separate them in case one of them goes out. So there's only one point of failure. That's a good point. Can you send me an email? We're having a meeting tomorrow morning, or I can share it with our IT person. Is it just fire the email? Any other questions? I think it's uh, just recently been upgraded to a hurricane at the last uh, report. Um, can you comment on that? Yeah, it has, and it, again, we expect it to be a strong Category 1. Uh, it's forecasted now to pass us, as I mentioned, uh, at a ca Category 2. So again, that's why it's so important that we prepare early uh, and that we listen to the emergency personnel, emergency staff, emergency measures organizations about staying off the roads, staying inside throughout the storm. It's going to be a long storm with tropical storm winds blowing in around 24 hours. Uh, hurricane winds roughly eight to nine hours. A lot can change. We're talking about the weather here, but it is so important that we take this storm seriously and that we make all the necessary precautions that we, we can possibly do, as we have done before, and take care of ourselves and our neighbors. Yeah, it's moving sort of four or five miles an hour. Do they expect that to increase or stay slow? They don't know exactly uh, if that will increase, but they are very confident uh, with this storm of the models as to where the location is going to go. So the Bermuda Weather Service is very good about keeping, uh, now that we're in a hurricane warning, they will be updating us every three hours as to what's going on. And certainly the speed of the storm, uh, any direction deviation of the storm will be noted in every subsequent uh, update from the Bermuda Weather Service. And the EMO, and of course, are guided uh, by that official uh, Bermuda Weather Service page as well. There's many, there are many, uh, you know, other pages, some are cool graphically, some are, you know, really cool on social media platforms, but what we are encouraging everyone is that the official, um, the official page or site uh, that we reference is the Bermuda Weather Service, because they have a direct link with the National Hurricane Center over in the States. Uh, again, a comment, uh, what about the causeway closure? I know you kind of touched on that. Is there a guaranteed time that you're going to close, close, close the causeway or is there a Absolutely. specific wind speed that you're looking for? And after the storm, when would you, you know, obviously you have to assess the causeway after the fact? That's or? right. No, we're, we're, you know, we want to make sure that we are very decisive and very clear with the general public about the closure of the causeway, which is why it is a firm 11 p.m. tomorrow night. It will be closed. And that is because we are looking at the, the, the confidence in the models of the storm, uh, the wind speed, the potential wind speeds, uh, and it simply won't be safe for motorists to be out, which is why we've given them uh, that hour buffer. We want everyone off the roads at 10 p.m. Uh, the causeway will be closed at 11 p.m. and will not reopen uh, again for at least um, 12 about that 11 p.m. closure. So everyone needs to make those precautions. We have uh, you know 30 hours to prepare for that. And it's important that we start to think about all the contingencies now. Yes, John? We have a Burn News viewer was asking, will the uh, Lamb Fogo Clinic be open? The Lamp, that's a great question, and thank you, your, your viewer, for, for that question. The Lamb Fogo Clinic will remain open throughout the entire storm. It will not close. The, uh, the hospital has uh, given them extra staff, uh, et cetera, to do whatever they need to do. So um, the Lamb Fogo Clinic will be fully operational and will not close at all during the storm. Businesses that are thinking about, you know, opening tomorrow and trying to maximize their bottom line. Sure. Is there any advice uh, for private businesses as to when you advise potential closures? Well, we're guided again by the Chamber of Commerce. That's a good question about private businesses, and ultimately, you know, that's a decision that they would have to make. 
but the Chamber of Commerce has come out and, and has said we are going to be consistent with what government is doing and because government closing schools at 12 government buildings are closing at two, uh, three o'clock um, the Chamber of Commerce has made that decision to close at two o'clock to allow everyone to make their preparations um, so that you know they can go out and they can deal with uh, all the things that they need to because look you know people who are coming in uh, who are opening shops uh, have have uh, things they need to take care of as well. You know? For clarity, 3, 3 p.m. is what the Chamber of Commerce had uh, indicated uh, they were asked. I'm sorry, I, that's right, that's right. Any information on private schools? Uh, private schools, uh, I don't have any official information, but um, I have been in contact with, uh, with private schools and have shared with them what the government school closure strategy is for this storm. I expect them to mirror that for the very same reasons, because it's safe to do so, because we want to make sure that while the storm winds have succeeded on Friday morning, that's what is forecasted, A, that can change, and B, we don't know that we can have a proper health and safety assessment of every school before we put our children back in there. I want to make sure that our kids really do come first with safety here. The teachers, all the associates who work in these schools need to make sure that they're in uh, and they're feeling safe and they are safe in their schools. And on a Friday, when those assessments are made, further, uh, you know, when they can open and any damage assessments will be done then. So we expect the schools to reopen on Monday uh, and here throughout uh, over the weekend from private schools to public schools, uh, what their challenges are and help them out as much as we can so we can get kids back in school on a Monday. I do know that the Department of Education uh, has made it clear that they will be sending kids home tomorrow with a lot of homework. So they will not be bored in the daylight hours. How often are the EMO updates and do the press get notified at the same time that you send out the updates? That's a great question and here's, here's why I think this uh, is going to be really helpful in getting the message out. The EMO will be getting, uh, we, we, of course we are monitoring the Bremen Weather Service page every three hours and any other relevant changes we will put out. So there's likely going to be uh, another release later on this evening, and then continuing, you know, the continuing the message throughout uh, the storm, uh, the storm event. However, we know that many of us in Bermuda, particularly the younger demographic, seek uh, the news and information via social media platforms, and so they may not wait until a broadcast in the evening. They may not wait until the daily paper comes out, and that's really why it's exciting for me to be able to share this information with you in a briefing form so that we can get that information out to all those social media users who prefer this method of news uh, kind of consuming over the traditional media. So thank you. I'd like to thank everyone for coming and um, uh, potentially do this again. I think it was uh, very helpful. So thank you very much. All right, thank just you. one real quick, just sure. put out all of the information that, that's relative to, you know, again, just recap all of the EMO sort of touch points. I, I can't even, because it's you, I will. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna run. Some people run remember the this. very first part and the very last part. You got part. it. It's important, so I will, I will do that again. And so, uh, again, as a result of the EMO meeting we had, we just finished. Um, I'd like to just go over um, the key points. Those key points are: the causeway will be closed at 11 p.m. tomorrow night. We will be notifying motorists, and we're notifying them now that we do not. Um, we're advising them not to use the road. Uh, after 10 p.m. tomorrow. Government schools will be closed tomorrow at 12. The schools will be closed on Thursday and the schools will be closed on Friday as well. Uh, government offices will be closed tomorrow at 3 and they will be closed on Thursday as well. Again, we mentioned earlier the Chamber of Commerce has said that they are going to mirror the same strategy with closing. So the uh, offices uh, in the Chamber of Commerce will be closed at 3 p.m. the businesses in town and elsewhere will be closed at 3 p.m. as well. Um, we are again uh, letting folks know that we want them off the roads as much as possible and even following the passage of the storm uh, to take great care and stay off the roads until the emergency services have done the, their assessments um, to make sure that the, there's no wires down. Belco can make sure that they can get to places um, and to restore power if that is needed. There will be flight cancellations, as we know. The Elk Wade International Airport will make an assessment tomorrow about when and if they will close, which is likely. Uh, public transport. Here are the key points with public transport. There will be no ferry services tomorrow. 
the last public bus will run at 8 p.m. tomorrow evening. The Royal Bermuda Regiment will have staff, uh, a tremendous amount of staff on standby throughout the island, not just at war camp. They'll be in the east, west, and central uh, to be able to respond to anything needed. Uh, again, as John mentioned, the land, Lamb Fogo Urgent Care Facility will remain open throughout the storm event. Uh, the emergency broadcast station 100.1 FM will be broadcasting from 10 p.m. tomorrow until. Um, the EMO will convene, reconvene a meeting on Friday when it's safe to do so to establish where we are uh, and make other arrangements from them. So those are really the key points from the EMO meeting and uh, I'm glad that we were able to share them with uh, you and therefore all of your followers. So again, spread the, the message on social media and um, you know, follow the, the Twitter pages, Facebook pages of the EMO. Uh, my, my Twitter feed as well, we'll be make sure we, we put out as much information as possible, legitimate information. And stay safe, uh, all of your families, I hope your, your families stay safe and um, you uh, actually get to enjoy yourself a little bit. Thank you very much everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.